Hey, what's happening? It's Rendell. We're back again for another Rendell Classic. And boy, have I got a good one for you. I'm at my boy, Jamal's house. And let me just see if he's in, first of all. Jamal, are you home? Hey, what's happening, bro? <laughs> what's up? All you good, man. All good. Welcome. Thank you, man. Thank you. Looking forward to this. Definitely. All right. See you in a sec. <laughs> I need a hundred thousand acres, 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 acres. I need a hundred thousand acres, 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 acres. I need a hundred thousand acres, 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 acres. Uh. When the Lord bless me, big time's gonna be a hundred thousand Couple albums, few years off how I'm sounding I was drowning, when I wasn't me, I was clowning Had to move a mountain with a fountain Forget you, man, tapping into me Altitude so high, I need skis And before the release, false anxiety Came back like David, now I'm tall in these streets On free books deep Ocean views from the crib Ten minutes drive from the beach uh, Came from nothing, I could show you receipts now it's on me Making my moves on the board and I'm taking your peace I'm the darkest of nights and you pawns ain't finna take me Nah Hundred thousand acres, get your paper, get your cake up, you're the baker, you're the high Hundred thousand acres, get your paper, get your cake up, you're the baker, you're the high Hundred thousand acres, get your paper, get your cake up, you're the baker, you're the high Hundred thousand acres, get your paper, get your cake up, you're the baker, you're the high uh, I've been on my paper in the chambers Had to step my game up, change the lane first While you was in the rave, I was in the states, bruh Living Hollywood dreams, call me a Laker I've been on though Shooting threes like Rondo Making deposits in my Monzo Boss, I'm the honcho Wifey said we need a crib, not a condo This is no training day, Alonzo All black Balenciagas Told that we could be just like the Carters We are this I know sometimes in your life it's been the hardest Baby, that's the game, you can charge it And when the double R's park, Then you know we in the charts Same kids on Nevis or same Bart You choose Now we ain't gonna lose Now the farm just pays for the drip Drip, drip in the shoes Shoes Uh from the seat to the table, mango fruits on a Tuesday, uh When it's time to drop again, girl, I told you that we gon' cruise, cruise, uh This is that winning sound, people just gonna move to, uh I be doing this, this is nothing new, nothing new, uh So tell me, man, bro, like, the first time when you had the, the idea of just building a home Because I know when we connected last year, mm -hmm. and you were telling me about just the journey in general like what was like the first recollection you, you had of like i'm gonna build a house yeah so this is actually my second attempt i don't know if we've, we've discussed this before but maybe eight years ago mm. i embarked on this journey before um okay. on, on a totally different property um we could actually i could actually see it i know where it is okay so i could see it from here yeah, yeah. Uh, but i Purchased an acre of land in like maybe 2007, around there, 2006. And I went through the entire process, got an architect, they told me like the cost per square foot and I worked it out that I could afford this, afford that. Uh, got the plan approved by their housing authorities, sent it for an estimate, the estimate came back like four times the amount of what they told me it should cost. So that I was a bit disappointed from that experience. So I just kind of walked away from that whole process. Okay. I had already started talking to the bank to secure loans, mm -hmm. everything, started talking to mm -hmm. contractors, and I just kind of walked away from it. I was so disappointed. And I felt a bit deceived. Okay, you how know, so? I think I was given the low figures just to get me into the process. Right, okay. Because I was very clear that like, Ten years ago, I wasn't really making, you know, so I, like it has to be in a tight budget. So I kind of walked away from that process. And then maybe three years ago, my youngest sister was looking for property. Mm. And she was looking in this development. And I said, hmm, the prices aren't bad. And the views are amazing. Let me see what a quarter acre looks like. Okay. And then I stumbled onto this lot here. And so I purchased the lot in my mind thinking that I, I'll build at some point in the future, not necessarily having Straight. a date or time in mind. 
and the stars just align. I met an architect who we kind of started crafting something and then I came down here and he introduced me to a contractor. Nice. And <laughs> just like that, everything just kind of snowballed. But in, in regards to the initial question about wanting to build here, I just knew I always wanted something here. Mm -hmm. um, here is pretty spectacular yeah. for me. <laughs> I, I, I think we've discussed, whenever I get off the plane, there's like a, a shift. I feel it every time. There's a shift deep within me. Mm -hmm. My psyche, um, I don't know what it is. Yeah. I'm not really a fully spiritual person, but there's definitely a shift. I've always known I wanted something here. Mm. To, to contribute, to be a part of, um, to claim my stake um, mm. from the country you know, I grew up in. So Yeah, no, for sure, man. And I guess it's like, especially you having you know some experience of doing something at first you already had like an idea there yeah. of like what that process would look yeah. like and i think that's not always like a bad idea because if you're wanting to build something special mm -hmm. you know getting any kind of practice i think you know helps you know what i mean because you know what those steps are then you know what to look for yeah it takes some of the fear factor out of it and anxiety you know are you like mm -hmm. what's the banking process is going to be could i even do this what information they're going to need so i did that the first time around so this time I, I had a pretty good idea of what i needed to be done so then that wasn't a barrier anymore or anything that would stop me yeah, yeah. uh you know the the anxiety was then around the actual building process from a distance because we have heard, I, you may not know, but I've heard quite some horror stories of people in my same situation, you know, you live abroad and you definitely want to come back home and you're not in a position yet to be retired and to be here or uh, financially able to be here to manage your project yeah. and having to do it from afar and rely on the contractors and rely on people. So I've heard some quite harrowing stories and so that was the other kind of fear factor, but then there's no other way to do it. It's true. Yeah, you just <laughs> there's no other way to do it. So if it's what you want, you just kind of try to project and manage the best you can from a distance. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's true because I mean, y you have to just dive in at the end of the day. It's like, and cause that is, that is the truth. You have to man, because trying to, I, I think micromanage something, you're going to try that, but I know from my own research, I haven't gone through the house building process yet, but yeah. I know things yeah. always happen. Yeah. That's, that's been the, the yeah. learnings I find. We were talking about um, Grand Designs. I yes. love that show. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The best yes. education you yes, can get. <laughs> yes, yes. That's what I used to watch to ease my anxiety. Like, okay, this is not just happening to me. Yeah. Oh, they blew it by a million? Okay, I'm not doing bad then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. Did, you, did you have like those kind of worries like before you started? Of course, I remember. So, so literally, uh, the contractor. I we flew here with my my family was here for Christmas, yeah. and we came like that Saturday, and I met him the Monday. Okay. And he showed me a few of his projects. Beautiful. Like he's one of his his own personal home. Like to to date, one of the best homes I've ever personally be, been in. Wow. Nice. Right here on Nevis. Yeah, like, yeah. Pretty pretty spectacular. The finish is amazing. So I told him, like, if I could get half these finishings, um, I'm ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we met them Monday, and then he did the tour. I brought him to the site to look at the plan, and he said, when do you want to start? Mm -hmm. So like, well, I'm like, well, uh, you know, I had no idea. And he like, let me make a phone call, and he walks off and come back. He like, I could start digging the foundation on Wednesday. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so Quick like that. Yep, yep, yep. So then it was, it was that was a deciding moment. Like, mm -hmm. I was scared, like, just, you could only imagine. I just yeah. didn't know, but I, it was very clear to me that this was an opportunity. Mm. And it, based on what I've been through, I said, you know what, it's no one ever. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it. so talking about diving in, that was diving in both feet. So I, I, all the apprehensions, all the anxiety, just kind of have to, put those at bay and say, hey, it's not one ever. Yeah, yeah. See, they're going to work, it's not going to work. And, and that is life anyway, true. for everything we do, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I think even from the, the people that I have watched, you know, go through that process, most of them is like 99% of the time, they was like, hey, we just had a feeling, 
and we wanted to do it we had thought about it for a while and then it just went in yep 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 because yep, yep, it's yep. not so cut and dry like, no there's so many things to factor too many in. variables yeah and then yeah. yeah my greatest was i so dog foundation that december 2019 okay and started building that january of 2020 mm-hmm. i came back at the end of february and in the intention was to come back like every six weeks or two months to monitor and see and make sure nothing goes too awry or crazy before without my input yeah and then 2020 for march that was it it was lockdown for everybody yep. Yeah. yep 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 so so i, I literally built this house during covid that's so cool man. yeah a lot of respect for so 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 then that compounded the other anxieties i had so yeah yeah. And even that, you know, just in itself, because that was obviously and has been a challenging time for yes. everyone. Yes, yes, but yes. I can only imagine, I know we spoke about this a while back, but just going through that process during lockdown, like, what, and being abroad, like, what was that like, man? What, what were you, what were you thinking? Did you think it was going to stall or? Like, yeah, really, it did, it did, it did for a while. My greatest thing is that I, um, I really wanted to be here throughout the bill because then you, 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 this was on a plan. Mm. I have no concept of space. Okay. <laughs> you know, some people do, mm. oh, it's 20 feet by 16 feet. It means nothing to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I had no, you know, no concept of, of actual space. And I, I was trying to, because I had to ship stiff stuff down, I was trying to do furnishing and appliances and kitchen. I was trying to do all that in one go. Mm-hmm. So I really wanted the opportunity to at least walk the foundation to say, okay, this is what we feel. This is, it's too big. It's, it's too small. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was one of the, the biggest challenges for me is just having no idea what the actual space felt like. Um, so then you realize I, I kind of really do like the final and finishing touches with interior design. Mm-hmm. And then I realized very quickly that I would just have to work with whatever it is when I get here because pretty much the entire house went up without me being ever yeah. setting foot in it. Yeah, because Nevis was closed down for a full year. Yeah, yeah, it was. So they were closed down from March 2020 to March 2021. And that was the first time I had the opportunity to come home and see the house. At mm-hmm. that point, um, the windows were all, doors and windows were already in. Okay. Um, roof was on, there's no electricity, but you know, it was, it was the, 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 main, the main construction was already done. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that, was, that was a challenge, like, you know, and, and it's, it's weird how the human psyche works. Mm-hmm. I just like you know it, it went from I won oh I, I you know it better be this it better be that or they better have this <laughs> and then it could be like, like hey if I at least get the roof I'm thankful <laughs> yeah, yeah, <exactly. laughs> you yeah. know so yeah no it's true but I mean even does that having a, a great architect has obviously helped yeah. you yeah. make that transition because to just step foot and then the property is finished yeah, that's that's super fortunate because again, some of the stories you hear, even people on site. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what my know. friends tell me. I be complaining, and my friends are like, "But I was here, and it did worse to me." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but then the, the architect. So the, uh, the the planning of the house took a few months. So that I was very like integral into the design. Nice of the actual. Uh, I was looking back the other day and um, where we started and where we ended up. Two totally, totally different, different plans. I, I was so um, gun shy from my first experience with the estimate and what they told me. Mm-hmm. I intended on building a one room house. Yeah. yeah that, <laughs> that was my intent. That was the first focus. That, yeah, I, like, I am not going to fall into that trap again. Yeah. Uh, you know, I won't be had. I'm definitely going to build something I know I could afford outright. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, I started with a one room a one room uh, house, a okay. modern one room house. And then, you know, I, 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 my, the architect kept telling me to do a second room. I'm like, I don't have fussy friends. They, yeah. you know, they, they, like, <laughs> they you know, can crash. They can crash. I don't need a second bedroom. Yeah, so don't try mm. to sell me into it. But yeah. he eventually did um, by showing the breakdown. And I guess being a layman in building, you know, you think, oh, an extra bedroom will cost you half as much. And it, it doesn't. No. You know, so once he showed me the finances, like, okay, let's do it. So it turned out to just be a, a two bedroom. Yeah. yeah. So, 
I think obviously it was a great decision when you're on a beautiful site like it this. Is, it's like, it is, yeah. And the site di dictated um, how how they build and true. Um, ended up as well. Yeah. yeah. So even when you went from that decision from one to two beds, was it like a hard back and forth or once he showed you, did you then say, you know what, that makes sense? It was like, it was more like a convince me. Show me the numbers. I, yeah. I, I'm, in, <laughs> I'm in business operations, so okay. show me the data, show me the numbers, <laughs> you know, give me some concrete facts. I don't want any more feelings, yeah. you know, so, so, and then once he did as well, it also improved the look of the design. So that's what really sold me. Yeah. More than the the functionality of a second bedroom, it made the house look um, a, a lot better. Yeah, yeah. And it's and it's crazy. I said to you last time I was here that when you walk into the property, like it feels bigger than two bedrooms. Yes. And that's the one thing because I think as an artist, you know, creative entrepreneur, mm -hmm. whatever, I I've never really spoke too much about like mm -hmm. my love for architecture. Yeah. Like when yeah. we first linked up, and I was saying, bro, like. Grand Design, I've seen every episode, yeah, 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 <laughs> any yeah, kind of yeah, architecture yeah, yeah. show, I've watched it because I just love design. Yeah. But when you walk into the property, it's like it just opens up immediately and yeah, you, you yeah, would think yeah, it's like yeah, four yeah, or five yeah, bedrooms. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. good, good design. design. And, and um, not only Grand Design, there are tons of resources on YouTube. Yeah. I watch hours and hours of different interior designers and architects and you just just listen and learn and mm -hmm. you know i knew it was going to be a small footprint i knew i don't really desire a massive house mm -hmm. um so and i knew and some things i knew i want i knew because it was going to be small i needed high ceilings and this is stuff i learned on on, yeah. on youtube from other Great interior choice. designers yeah <laughs> you know if you're going to be a small footprint and you have high ceilings it makes it feel more voluminous so mm -hmm. So that's stuff like that I knew. So when I told architects here, like I wanted the main area to be 15 foot, they were like, wow. why? Yeah, they, they couldn't they understand. Or like, just build it, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? That's so, what I want. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah. I know because if you, if you look at the actual space, it feels big, but there's hardly any space between the living and the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's like here the kid living, here the kitchen is here, but like mm. you say, you don't feel that. And then the other visual effect was the big, the doors, yep. so your view continues that way. Mm -hmm. From the time you made to the big, from the door, your views go, so it just feels expansive. So, yeah, yeah, and it flows. Yeah. yeah, and I definitely needed a covered outdoors. My parents have a massive porch. Okay. And when we're all here, that's where we spend 90% of our time. Outside. Yeah, yeah we eat talk work mm -hmm. hang out that's where we are until we go to bed true so then i realized okay we really use interior spaces not that much mm. you know the kitchen for cooking but we're not eating there we bring all the food outside so yeah exactly it was the same that those are the ideas around the design for me okay yeah now and again especially when it's a hot climate like nevis is yeah. obviously beautiful as people can see yeah. <laughs> um, so shout out to nevis and think it's too but um like the the outdoor space, mm -hmm. like that's what really creates the the vibes. I think, like again, with the hammocks and you know people will see yeah. on the, when we do the show yeah. round after. Yeah. But yeah. it's like it's like the indoor outdoor, yeah. and I love those yeah. kind of yeah. properties yeah. where, yeah. like now, because it yeah. is covered, you do feel like you're inside yeah. the property. Yeah. But yeah. this yeah. is like more oh, outside. It's yeah. more space. Yeah. So um, so this is this is culturally historically this is not something we do here um, you know here the emphasis is really placed on the size of the home mm -hmm. and cause that shows how successful or not you are so if you drive around here you see some pretty massive homes yeah uh, but you go into those homes and they feel so tiny the layouts right yeah because they have like a hundred rooms <laughs> and not only that they have these little tiny windows yeah so you have a house that's like five thousand square feet and you have like these little standard windows throughout so they you know and two and this is a theory that i'm yet to prove okay <laughs> um i i suspect some of these restrictions are based on hurricanes as well yeah, I, yeah. I did think that yep 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 so so i have massive 
open doors and folks ask me, what are you going to do during Hurricane? I'm like, we'll find out. Let's see how it works <laughs> first, you know? This is the first plan, the first test. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but I still think that you could do, I don't want to say good or bad architecture, but you could experiment a bit more mm -hmm. um, outside of what you grew up with or what you know. Absolutely. And, and it can work. So, and in terms of the indoor, outdoor, you and I spoke about Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And, and Bali and I, I've been to Bali and I, I just absolutely love the outdoor showers. Um, yeah. yeah. Later on when we do a walkthrough, I, I intended to have an outdoor shower, but this area where we are is called um, locally Windy Hill. Okay. <laughs> um, just above across the rise is the Atlantic Ocean mm -hmm. and then this is the Caribbean. So we have the trade winds coming across here mm -hmm. like constantly. I, I told you about this having to keep my doors and windows closed because yeah. there it's too much. It's too much wind. Mm -hmm. So when I came up here I, I realized quickly like yeah, I would never show outside. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with, with wind like this, so so I had to let go of that dream. So mm -hmm. yeah, maybe the next project. Yeah. yeah. But well, even just that note, you know, having the Atlantic on that side and then the Caribbean, like, yeah. for those who don't or haven't experienced that, mm -hmm. like, can you just describe for them? I mean, they'll see glimpses, but, like, what is that like? You got two different oceans left yeah. and right at the property. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so, so uh, you're, you're testing my geography now, I don't remember. <laughs> um, but the, so the Caribbean Sea is kind of protected by Central um, America and the Caribbean, the line of Caribbean islands. Yeah. So it's a protected body of water. So you could see if you're picking this up on the cameras, you could see it's almost like, it's not quite glass, but it's almost like a lake. Mm -hmm. And it's typically like this, it's very serene, very picturesque. Over on the other side, on the Atlantic, that's where you keep getting those trade winds. So it's always like rough water. It's almost like a surface paradise. Yeah on that end the waves are always ridiculous you don't really find people utilizing the beaches on the atlantic side um because there are a lot of there are a lot of rip currents there are um whirlpools wow. it's not it's also not recommended yeah they've had i growing up i know at least two kids during high school times that like drowned oh my god swimming swimming on the atlantic side so unless you're a strong strong swimmer it's not really recommended uh, yeah yeah, so um, here on the, in the Caribbean, it's just, like I said, because it's protected, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's always kind of like this, unless there's really some type of tropical depression or mm -hmm. hurricane, hurricane yeah. around. No, true, true. And I guess even like, um, if I'm, I'm not going to spoil it for those, because I know mm -hmm. <laughs> bits, but when you was picking out like this particular site, mm -hmm. like were there things that you were looking for? specifically or was it like a feeling that he was going back? so i've always said I, I i said i'm earlier that i'm not a spiritual person but i'm truly realizing and learning that you put stuff out in the you speak what you want into the existence i mean i'm saying you're gonna get it but mm -hmm. i've always said i wanted a piece of property uh, that has views without being like on a cliff Mm, okay. So I wanted, I always wanted a piece of property like I could just sit and see the views. I didn't have to like build up to look, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, this kind of met those requirements. Uh, it's. Uh, I told the story about. I I called a developer and said, "Hey, I'm interested in your quarter acre lots," and I I specifically chose the quarter acre lots I saw. And again, this is because I was, I wasn't really in the market for property. Okay. So, you know, it was just like, okay, the prices aren't bad. If it's nice enough, I'm intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember he, he wasn't on island and he said he had a partner here who would show me. And I went to Sankey's that day. The boat came over late. And it was already like the sun had already set. And we were here and it was getting darker. And the road to here, it was like a track. Okay. And I remember walking down to the track and... He said it's further down, and as we're coming down, this is the drive, the, the views kept opening up. Yeah. So my heart starts to like, you know, <laughs> and the views kept opening up, opening up, and then we get to this point, and he said, it's here. And my first question, we're like, okay, so why is it still available? Because at this point, there are other lots behind me were already sold. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why would you buy there and not buy this? Yeah. And the answer was the because of how the property lines run, it it was almost like a triangular piece of property. Okay. 
and apparently, and I could understand, folks wanted a nicely square, square rectangle, rectangle and they were just not attracted to that. Okay. And I was like, if I have to buy a tr build a triangular house, I'll Do build it. a triangular house. <laughs> I want this piece of property. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. So that was it. Was really just the views, man. I just just sold it. The views and the price wasn't bad either. It was okay. affordable. It was a quarter acre. And uh, living in the States for so long, you realize you don't need as much space as you think. Correct. You know, so all of those things change my perspective yes. on house and what I need and what could be done. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing, you brought up a good point there about how much space is needed, right? Because... And where you need the space. Yeah, where you need it. Because any good architect will tell you, like, you don't always have to build, like, five six like seven thousand yeah, square foot yeah, house yeah. to have something yeah. well proportioned and again coming into this property it feels it, yeah. way bigger than yeah, what yeah, it yeah, is yeah, yeah. you know and yeah. again on a quarter acre plot which is a relatively good size yeah, yeah. it's good use of the yeah, land yeah 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 even when i brought like my friends here initially and give them the walk through they all will comment like why are your bedrooms so small mm. and i'm like because we're only going to sleep there <laughs> you know, you need a bed, a closet, mm -hmm. done, and you want to hang out, this is where you do it. Yeah, so exactly. I, I, prefer it. I put more space in the areas, the common areas, and mm -hmm. the bedrooms are small, small and snug and comfortable. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And even, you know, I know you live in the state, so just, just generally, because I know people who go through like that, the house build process, you know, and they are abroad from where they want to build, like, what were like the first things you looked at? I know you talked about like the, the finance inside and, and you had some experience, but what were like the first things you looked at? Yeah, so the first decision I had to make was where, where I wanted to, cause I, I, I had to get a loan mm -hmm. to build. Okay. So I was like, where do I want to take a loan? Do I want it in the US and have all that count against my taxes and all that type stuff mm -hmm. or or I could get a loan here, relatively, yeah, yeah. and it, it's not necessarily, it's not even easy, it's actually, I would actually go on record and say it's easier to get a loan in the U.S. than it is to get here. Yeah. Um, the requirements are a bit archaic, I think, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, and they don't, it was just, it was just a lot of back and forth, on it. I mean, I've, I've gotten loans in the States online. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a different financial system. You know, so it was just it was just a lot of back and, and forth. But that was the first thing I needed. Okay, where I'm gonna get this loan from? Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second thing I was top of my list is a project manager for the for the process. Yeah. Yeah. You I definitely need some you need boots on the ground to do those weird things when the contractor calls you and tell you like we're out of paint and you know it's, it's just some weird stuff that you would think they'd be taking care of that they don't mm -hmm. so, and, and then also payment for the work that's done and paying all the different trade people mm -hmm. those that's that stuff you kind of don't think about okay and a project manager comes in great for that who has that authority to sign and some but it's, you have a contract with them as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily saying somebody you trust, but you have to because then they would be managing some of your finances for you because it's just very difficult to do yeah. it from there. And, you know, I'm talking about the people who do something and they charge you $500 mm -hmm. and getting them paid and, you know, they, the trade workers are very impatient when it comes to getting yeah, paid yeah. so you know having some money here to do that um yes i have family you know my dad my dad's very busy mm. so i know i couldn't necessarily rely on him so those that for me the financing locking the financing down um definitely getting a project manager uh, definitely a contractor that you feel at least initially comfortable with okay yeah 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 because even and even your architect too obviously you had yeah. that yeah, job. my architect. Look, if if anybody <laughs> wants an architect, I'll I'll recommend this guy in a heartbeat. He's a, a younger guy. I'm I'm really into uh, exploring new talents as well. A lot of stuff that I got done here, um, uh, I didn't go to the more known folks. 
Okay. I, I really were into like really just seeing, okay, what are the younger folks doing and giving them the opportunity to be yeah. a part of something and, and you know, yeah, see what good. they have to offer. So, so yeah, it's a younger architect mm -hmm. uh, and it, the experience is very professional. The experience was, I had, there's no negative parts of the, of the actual architectural portion of this process. Uh, I, I recommend him hands down. Good. Yeah, you can link him at the end of your yeah video. yeah definitely we'll plug him <laughs> we have to yeah, yeah, <laughs> so you yeah. know hats off man like as i said when when i first came to to your house mm -hmm. i was just like in awe because it is rare that you know just in my short time mm -hmm. in the caribbean to to see like this level of modern architecture mm -hmm. um because traditionally you know you've got the, the pointed house um colorful walls um you know ceiling fans you know is that kind of and the small windows that's yeah. what i've always known even when i was younger yeah, yeah, of yeah, just yeah, yeah, what the yeah, caribbean yeah, looks yeah, like yeah, yeah. but i always say that with such beautiful landscape like this there's, there's so much like creativity you could put into the houses yeah. here um just with just some design you yeah, know yeah, i'm not yeah, saying yeah, i'm not yeah, yeah. You know, this name on design i'm just saying like the landscape calls for it um, yes, yes, would, yes. Were they some of the things that you, you and your architect discussed about, like making sure it's something that just sits nicely in the landscape? Yeah, I, I, I had to do a lot of convincing. All right. Yeah, less so with my architect. He was definitely on board. He's all over modern design. Actually, you know, he really wanted it to kind of build his portfolio as well. Okay. So, but for the building portion, you, you did some. It's not even convincing. There's a lot of conversation that came down to like, yeah, look, you need to do it all. Let me find somebody else who can. Yeah. Uh, I guess with, with anything else, like just things that are different to them or things they have not really had experience in building before. Uh, that was, it wasn't a struggle, but it just, for me, it, it was more conversation than I thought was necessary. Okay. Like, just, <laughs> just do it and let's move on. Yeah. Don't question me. I have my design style, um, you know, mm. if that's why you prefer when you build your house, you could do, you could do, do it, it that on way. yours, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it was, it, it, it was a lot of that, and in terms of the modern, I would tell you, I don't know when I got sold into modern architecture, but traditionally, or I think when I thought of living here, and building here, I always was really, I was, I guess, either uber modern or very traditional, I love the old colonial wooden houses. Okay. I, I do, um, and you, there's a way you could do that mm. and have some modern touches to it. Yeah. Uh, but then I found out early that it's more expensive to build that way. Absolutely. The cost of wood, especially now, could you imagine now? Uh, so, so that's how I abandoned that dream. Okay. And then I live in, in New York, I live in an apartment. I live in a one bedroom apartment, but it's, very, it's pretty. I live in a, um, a post-war building, mm -hmm. like in the 1960s. But I have a one bedroom, and I still have a one bedroom apartment, but that one bedroom is like a thousand square feet. Okay, so so it's, it's, it's a yeah. massive space, and I have done renovations to it. I've done my kitchen, we've done my bathroom, and that really kind of got me into that. And I realized for me, it's you could change a box into anything you want. True. Like you could you could totally redesign a box and have a total different look and feel. And that's what that's what made me not so fearful of building something boxy. Mm. Cuz you know you hear architecture they'll say oh modernism has no design it does boxes. Yeah. You know it has no character. And I used to kind of listen to that somewhat and thought I needed the gables and all of that. But no, you have, in in 10 years, I could redo that kitchen. Yeah, easily. Redo the counters, mm -hmm. paint it in all the color, you walk into an entire brand new house. So, so I was very um, attracted to that based on work I've done in, 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 in the States and see how I could, you could really change the look and feel of a mm -hmm. box. Um, and it, a box is easier to work with as well. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So. And even when just so, well, I know people will make the judgment themselves, but because you know when people say, oh, it's just the modern architecture these days, it's just like big boxes, white walls. Like, like when I say modern, yeah. but I don't, I don't see it like this because there's a lot of different elements. You know what it I is. mean? It's like, it is. 
is. Even like the the color palette. It is. Like even where I'm sat here, I'm seeing the brown, I'm seeing the brown and brown, cream. What do you know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah, like it's yeah, a very, yeah, very yeah, nice yeah. color palette. Yeah. So it doesn't feel like that to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe the tropical location as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I no, mean? No, I've had that I've had that comment several times about mm. all white walls. Um I did I did all white. So it's literally a white box. So I not only did white walls, I did white tiles. Mm -hmm. And that's because I couldn't I, I, as I said earlier, I cannot, I don't have that gift to visualize stuff. And because of the pandemic and everything that was going on, I was purchasing stuff online, having them shipped to a freight forwarder and having stuff sent down. So I couldn't, I didn't have a, the opportunity to go into a showroom and say, okay, put this yeah, and put this. this and choose this tile and they all do the like, and that's how I, I like, you cannot go with white. I cannot make a decision. I cannot choose a color. I, you know, and I was so fearful of the space being too dark if I put a darker tile. And I also have this huge phobia of mosquitoes. And I know they're attracted to dark areas. So all of yeah. this was going in my mind. So, but I, I definitely went with all white, mm -hmm. all white palette. And I did it initially thinking if I don't like it, I could always paint the wall a different color. That's true. Um, but I, I do like it a lot. That also adds to the expansiveness yes. of the space. So the, again, smaller space, lighter colors, higher ceilings, it does all of that plays into making it feel um, visually um, larger, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and and in in regards of the the wood, the wood I do love natural elements, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I for me this is my attempt to pull back in some of the cultural aspects. Definitely, you know, because historically everything we had here we made we weren't even in my lifetime we weren't ordering stuff from Amazon. <laughs> you know, yeah. everything was made locally and it was made by joiners and carpenters and it was like Trees wood. Yeah. yeah, you know, the old old mahogany chairs from the folks who had money, the, the mm -hmm. colonial days. Uh, so that's where the wood comes. I should have pulled aspects of that in so that and in a, and an attempt to not make it feel too sterile and harsh and all concrete as well. Got you. No, I, I get that. <clears throat> and I say that as well, you know, because there is, you know, natural resources here, I think mm -hmm. there might just be a gap in those original creatives that was doing stuff, you know, like, this is what we have, so this is what yeah. we're making out. Yeah. But now when you've got so many options, yeah. it's easy then to say, oh, I'm going to go online, I'm going to do oh, yeah. this, oh, yeah. oh, ship yeah. this in. But, you know, I do believe in, you know, that sustainable building and yeah. trying yeah. to get as yeah. many materials as you can. Here. Where the, where the I, I, I'm going to... I feel I 100% support ex everything you said. <laughs> it is so much cheaper to purchase online mm. and ship home, even with the high custom costs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> the stuff me? that I've had made locally, beautiful, don't regret, regret the decision. I could have done it for a fraction of the cost. Yeah. Yeah, so which is which is the catch twenty two? I guess. I mean, I do want to support local, mm -hmm. but then you know, I guess you just gotta like. I, I don't know. I don't know why stuff here is so expensive. Though I I, I know it's expensive. I know it's <laughs> as you guys say, bespoke and mm -hmm. and by hand, and you have to pay for that. But when it costs you ten times as much to build something, you could purchase for. It's, you know, it's, it's just it hard to justify, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I've done local in very um, key pieces, my gate, um, oh, my nice. vanity, um, same builder again, now the person got to plug, young, young, yeah, um, yeah. young <laughs> carpenter, very, and good to work, and I'm plugging people who, not only talented, but been easy to work with, because then that's the other problem here as well. Mm. You know, people who understand and just just understand that you're the customer, True. you're the client, you're paying. Yeah. <laughs> you know that, that that basic concept. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and and try to give you what you want. So mm -hmm. so yeah. So but um, it it is it, it is, and there's there's still a lot of stuff. What I really want to get into, which again is another um pricey venture, is local art. Okay. That's that's what I really really want to to get into. Nice. Start some local art collecting. Yeah, so.
yeah i mean again the decorate the decorated place and you know and there is a lot of talent here oh, talent. There's so much i guess talent. i would say it's, it's there's so much talent but it's not like say in the west or yeah. the east where yeah. you've got yeah. everything yeah. online yeah. Yeah. you've yeah. got to yeah. really find it on the ground yeah um but i was going to ask before we get into the, the art side of things but you know usually on as you've seen on a lot of these house building shows there's always something that came up that people just didn't expect or didn't know so were there any like big shockers <laughs> or what was the big shocker so the first day during the excavation of the foundation mm -hmm. Like one foot below the soil top, so we, we hit bedrock. Oh my gosh. So a lot of it had to be um, jackhammered wow. out. A lot? like Yeah, like especially for the system, mm -hmm. they had to, it had to be jackhammered out. And you're like, okay, it's okay until you find out like um, a regular excavator costs like $300 an hour, EC an hour, yeah. jackhammered almost doubles when you jackhammer it, it doubles so then bigger drill yep 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 so then you start like yeah you, you're doing foundation and you're thinking oh my god i'm gonna like spend all my money on the foundation so yeah. um that was that was probably the biggest um surprise i think for everyone like literally the it, the excavator went like don't hear <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stop it <laughs> it's like okay yeah, so yes. that, 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 that we didn't expect. Mm. Yeah. And there's just no way to really know. No, no. Right. I guess if you had engineers, if, you know, if I had people to come and assess the site, if I was balling like that, maybe, but <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, because yeah, there's a lot of work to do all those scans and yep, map yep, yep, out yep, underneath. Because, yep, 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 you know, yep, yep. for those who don't, like, Nevis sits to the volcano right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, so it's volcanic rock. Yep. Yep, it's heavy Jewish yep, stuff. It is, so, <laughs> yep, so it definitely had to be jackhammered out. Wow. Yeah. So like even in that process with the foundation, like can you recall like how long the foundation took? Cause I, I bring it up because that's usually like the determining factor of how oh, long the bill is going to. Yeah. So what we did, what we did, we made certain concessions. Like the the systems was a bit shallower than I initially wanted. You know we. We kind of made a few changes that allowed for we um, we I, I can't recall we we kind of I wanted the house to sit even lower to the ground, um, but apparently there is some ordinance where you have to be eighteen inches above the ground or something like that for water okay. or something like that. So we had to so instead of digging down to give me what I wanted, we kind of raised up a bit so that we okay. spent less time and less Makes money um, excavating the, the foundation. So just, okay. just the, those, those few changes uh, made a, a difference in the overall cost. Yeah. yeah. So we're talking, say, like weeks on the foundation? Ah, uh, no, days? no, maybe days. Yeah, okay, yeah maybe days, that. maybe days. Because again, too, it's not a huge foundation. See, yeah, that's another yeah. thing. It's, it's like not a it's huge foundation too. So it's 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 probably days, and then it was only in some areas like, like when you go down on the sides, it's you have more, like room to dig. But like it's where the points are higher. That's where you got the the bedrock, like in the middle of the house where the system is. That's where okay. everything was. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, because um, I don't know if you recall. I think. There was a point last year there was a house in sink it's that yes. collapse did you see yeah, that yeah it it yeah it's like slid down the hill yeah that's not gonna happen here no <laughs> <laughs> the hill would have to move like yeah. the hill would slide down something but yeah this is i'm pretty confident that this is pretty anchored yeah because again and i say that yeah. because when you're building so high up these are concerns that people yeah, have because yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm right. always fascinated by right. just how these properties just perch yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. So high even up. even even I don't remember, but I know in California, I remember in being in high school, and there used to be like a common occurrence, like there's rain and there are homes falling off of cliffs. In, in I don't know if it's LA back in the day, but I remember being in school. Yeah. I remember being in school, and this that's what, to me in my memory that was always on the television, like like mm -hmm. these million dollar homes and people trying to flee and grab what they could get because they're. Hillside starts to eroding and then yeah, 
Yes. So, so yeah, so there is, yeah, I don't know how to your point, um, <laughs> but I, I could tell you because I've seen the bedrock that this house was built on. Yeah. It's not going to slide so, going anywhere. Yeah. No. Yeah. And even like, just because one thing that's pretty interesting again is where like the land around here, there's all these peaks and, and, and guts as they call yep, them. Yep, right? yep, 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 yep. Like, did you have any like concerns even with that? Like when you seen like there's actual massive dips not too far no, away. No, no. I'll tell you what my thoughts were. Well, well, good. That means nobody could block my view. That's where I was. It's all selfish. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I'm on like a perfect ridge. I don't know if we'll get a chance to like tour around, but there's a about. gut here. There's a gut like I'm like I'm here, mm. and there's a fall off all on three sides around me. And the only way to here is to come in from behind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, no, no, no. I'm not too concerned at all. I, I'm, I was more thinking about preserving my view. A yeah, selfish, yeah. A selfish <laughs> thought, I know, and I, I'll admit, but that's where my thoughts were. Like, okay. Well, no one could build here. No one likely going to build here. No, <laughs> and probably not here either. So, yeah. so I I'll be able to preserve this for for some time. No, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, like I said, it's the the peace and the tranquility up here is just immense. Like I don't even know if the camera can capture no, the birds no, right now. You know, like no. it's just peaceful. Yeah, I remember like maybe the second time here, and I um, spent time in it, and I I had a massage. Okay. I I have a a, a masseuse who come set up, mm -hmm. and you know she comes and she put on like a little music, and. I was thinking that the bird sounds were part of her audio track <laughs> until after the massage. I was still hearing it. They're like, "Wow, yeah. that was just nature." Mm. Yeah, yeah. So it is, it is, it is, um, it is very tranquil. It's like the best sleep I get. Absolutely. I just, I just, I just, I just go. I hear nothing, and um, yeah, it it suits it suits me for where I am now in my life. Gotcha. Yeah, younger me may not need may not have needed all of this, but it's it's it feels like I'm just here by myself. Yeah, it's um, like I said, it's just so peaceful. And even just touching on that, like I know Sekis and Nevis, we have a lot of uh, monkeys that are roaming roaming wild. Like I know you were saying before, you planted stuff, but you start to see things come up now. <laughs> <laughs> I any, any new not. friends? <laughs> I've never seen. I've been here all this time. I've seen like monkeys down the hill. Mm -hmm. Never seen any up here. And I think it was last week Tuesday. My mom. I got some fruit trees. I. I if later we see, I kind of quartered off an area just for planting of fruit trees so that I could maintain on the general property. Just you know, minimalist type of. Yeah. Um, um, landscaping, mm -hmm. not too much stuff. Uh, so I, for last week Tuesday, I, I we planted some fruit trees, and I went out Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning to water them. And I heard some rustling to my right, and I look across, and there's a monkey looking like I was like, no <laughs> way, Crazy. like how? Yeah. How? Like I've never seen you guys up here. I put something in the ground yesterday, and you guys are here already. It's like a sixth yeah. sense, they just know. They do, they <laughs> do. So yeah, so so they're coming, but I'm prepared. I, I plan to do. Um, don't judge me, but I plan to do one of those solo electric wires around. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, you know, I know there's some debate about people thinking about like, cruelty to animals, but yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's 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 a needed thing. Yeah, I mean, are. especially because this is a serious point, like. There's so much fertile soil here to grow. Yes. But the amount of monkeys is yes. an actual problem because they it eat is. everything. It, and it will continue <laughs> to be a problem until and I don't know because and again this this touches a lot of social issues. Yeah. But they have no natural predators so they just breed. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> they, there's no tag. They, they don't, when there's I no grew up, I had never seen we had to go like to the countryside up in Rollins to okay. see a monkey. That's and crazy. hope that you saw a monkey mm -hmm. when I was growing up. You have to go to the countryside up in the hills, almost up in the mountains, mm -hmm. and hope that you'll see a monkey. Now they're everywhere, yeah, and that's because they, 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 they just breathe. Mm -hmm. And you I know? don't even think, is there any idea of numbers? I doubt it. 
it's hard to, it's I, so I, dense, I, and I there's no way to know, I, right? I, I doubt it, sir. but they're, they're definitely a lot more than when I was growing up, and they're going to continue to multiply. Yeah. Um, they have to eat. True. You know, <laughs> they, <laughs> you know they, they, they have to be a part of the environment, but it's something at some point, I think, um, from a social standpoint, we'll have to deal with it. Although it's, they, they're already a nuisance. Mm. They just continue to become more of a nuisance, I think. Yeah, so. and it is one of those hard decisions because, you know, people obviously love animals, but when it affects, like, your livelihood, that's a whole different thing. And, and it's not like you have the natural order of, you know, no, no. predators no, and prey. No. Like, they, they have no predators. They, they <laughs> like, rule. They, they rule. rule. <laughs> They, they rule yeah. yeah but yeah man like, that's crazy but but let me ask you this though bro like now you've done one or your second construction project mm -hmm. now like do you have the urge because i know you're still relatively new but do you have the urge to to dive back into something you think? it's weird um <laughs> i actually would mm. i would it's like the journey of my emotions, initially, I was like just scared. I was scared that I would run out of money before I got a house, you know, because these are the stories they hear. I was afraid that the contractor was going to swindle me out of thousands, and then I don't get anything. So those were my initial fears. And then you started, okay, like, phew, at least the roof is on, and I still have some money. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay, the doors are in and I still have some money. Oh, the tiles are in and I still have some money. So mm. those fears abated uh, somewhat. Uh, but then when I got here for the first time, I was, it was such mixed emotions. Cause like I said, I, I, I waited a year. I saw videos, I saw pictures, but nothing compares to walk into this. It was the first time. If I, as I joke, I tell my brother, if I was a more emotional person, I would have just been <laughs> melt. Yes. I, 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 maybe if I was here by myself. Mm. But then quickly, my very meticulous eye started picking up on things like, wait, what is this? What is this? So, yeah. so that elation quickly turned to something <laughs> else. Like, why are the ties looking like this? Why isn't... Mm. It became, you know, like the first walkthrough. I, I, I remember being so upset because my first walkthrough, I was always thinking, already thinking of remodeling. And I said, that should not be. No. You know, but that was my, uh, my reality. Mm. So it was, it was that. It was feeling like I thought I was going to get a better product, um, a more finished product based on the examples I saw when they presented their portfolio yeah. i expected my expectations were a lot higher i'm also a very particular person okay so so that's how may have component it so it, it it quickly changed to me just feeling like i wasted time and money uh you know and then you kind of start you move into the space you start living in it you start decorating it's, you know, you put in the kitchen and they start coming together and, you know, at this point you learn to live with the crooked wall or the, you know, whatever, or the grow lines or the mismatched yeah. tile, <laughs> uh, you know, so you start loving it and you start seeing it for what it is and you're like, okay, it's, it's not, it's not bad, it's not what I would have wanted, but I, I could live with it and then when you kind of get over on that, the other side of that hill, you're like, okay, it wasn't the worst experience. That's fair. It could have, I would have liked it to go in a total different direction. Um, but it, it, I survived and we have a product and for the most part it, it's decent. So, so yeah. Cool. But the, the, the urge to do something else is to like, improve upon. The last project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, definitely to improve upon. Okay. No, that's so, cool. so I, so I, I, I would not right now, but I definitely I could see me doing another investment project or maybe even what what do they call what's that term when you build your your home the home home of your dreams oh, so yeah, my, dream yeah my dream home mm -hmm. yeah so nice man. nice and I would like to I would say wrap on for those who are gonna see this video and have that idea that dream 
Because um, again, that was one of the things we connected on, just mm-hmm. that, that love for mm-hmm. like architecture mm-hmm. and design, you know. But what one bit of advice could you give someone who's thinking about making that step? And especially if they are abroad too, and mm-hmm. they're like, they want to maybe go back home or they've got an idea for a location. Like, what, what advice would you give to that person? Um, advice I would give, you know, you definitely have to do all your homework. Um, your research, know what you want. You, you kind of have to plan this from end to end. Like I knew very early what I was going to purchase here and what I was going to import. Mm. And trying in an attempt to consolidate what I was shipping here, you know, you don't want to be doing piece piece and stuff like that. I would say definitely know what you want end to end. Once you have the vision, I said first it's, it's the vision. Then you definitely, if you're one of those lucky people who already have property here, then that's half the battle. So I would say get the vision. Once you have the vision and you know it's something you want, I find like everything else falls into place if it's something you, you really want. I, my word of advice would say uh, trust your vision. Nice. Um, trust your vision, trust your, yourself. If it's what you want, um, don't let anybody talk you out of it. You know, it's, it's, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy in a weird, skewed way, but yeah. this is always what I wanted. I didn't know how I was going to get here or when, uh, but I knew it continued to be a goal of mine. When I purchased this property, my friends and my family would laugh at me because I would come up here every day and just sit yeah. and Manifest visualize. That, yeah. yeah. I would visualize it, I would see it, and I luckily, I have my best friend who is my brother, who, I don't even call him a younger brother, he just like, you know, <laughs> um, encourages me, enables me, and my, my, it's not necessarily foolery, but yeah, he was right there along with me, we would put stones down to try to map out yeah. places, and, and, and yeah, if, if, you, if you have that dream, and it is your dream, I say stick on it. It is definitely possible. Um, sometimes, my in my case, my dream turned out to be even better than I could have been envisioned. That's dope. You know, so so I, I said stick on it, and it can be done. I'm, I am not, I am not a wealthy person. I'm no, not even close. You know, I'm your average young person, just budget and had his dream and know where what I wanted and put money aside and stuff like that, and it, it can be done. Um, the other thing too that worked well for me is that because I sacrificed size, I was able to put a bit more in finishes. Right. You know, I, I could see I could afford my I could afford big doors because it's only a two bedroom house. If, mm-hmm. if it was a bigger house, I couldn't afford these doors on each bedroom. You yes. know, so it's, it's it's stuff like that. I'm not saying that you need to downscale the dream, but you need to be cognizant of all these things. Exactly. Just have a pretty good vision of, of what you want and then just go for it. And, that, and that's, that should be a, um, the mantra for life, period, outside of construction and architecture. <laughs> just if you have a vision, go for it. That's all. Yeah. That'll be my advice. Don't let anybody stop you. It's possible. Nice. Yeah. yeah we will. I think that's a perfect note to end on. <laughs> well, yeah, appreciate it, bro. We're going to have a, a look around the property yeah, and let the people see the, the Happy great to works. Show you through. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and this, the disclaimer is not completed yet, but it's, it's completed enough. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> cool.